Good morning, Namaste and Kuzang Pala from the land of the Thunder Dragon. Ladies and gentlemen, I Rishi Nandan with Team Connecting Nation is in Thimpu, Bhutan to cover the third parliamentary elections. Ladies and gentlemen, we all know it very evidently that Bhutan might be smaller in size and population but they are large and huge by heart. In the primary round of the elections held on 15th of September this year, DNT has already made a lead of 2000 plus votes but we never know the final outcome of the elections and will try to meet the president of both the parties and hear from them what plans do they have for the future of Bhutan for the days to come. India and Bhutan has been age old friends as long as 50 years and this third parliamentary elections of Bhutan coincide with the 50 years of relationship between India and Bhutan. We wish both the nation continues this relationship and the people to people contact between the two nations live long and healthy. Ladies and gentlemen, stay updated, stay connected with Team Connecting Nations. Namaste, Kuzang Pola. I, Rishi Nandan, is with the TNT President, Dr. Lothe Chiring, and who is also the strongest contender of the next Prime Minister of Bhutan, which was evident from the primary elections of 2018. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's get in touch with Dr. Lothe Chiring and let's hear about the elections and about the future of Bhutan from him itself. First of all, uh Congratulations, sir, for your uh, lead in the primary elections and welcome to the show. And as we have been uh, following the party and the manifestos of the party, we are, it is very much also evident that uh, the main tagline that is being used for the party for this election is narrowing the gap between the rich and the poor. So the first thing that we would like to know is how exactly are you going to work on this commitment to narrow down the difference between rich and poor, sir? Well, I mean, narrowing the gap probably is on everybody's mind. We need to do that. And uh, as long as we are sincere in what we are saying, I don't think that is a difficult task anyway. Because Bhutan is small, we are very few in numbers. We know what to target, we know where to target. So as long as we come up very sincere, I don't think it's a difficult uh, vision at all to accomplish. As because you are also a surgeon by profession, all of us know this and we also know that you have been catering, you have been servicing the population of Bhutan and that too without any fees which is very much uh, known to us. Will it be a health oriented uh, government uh, in case your party happen to come in power sir? Oh, just because I am a doctor doesn't mean I will focus only on health. But uh, health of the population, health of Bhutanese cannot be ignored at the same time because without a healthy population, a country will never be healthy. So when we talk about uh, economy of the country, how can one ignore health of Bhutanese? So yes, we intend to uh, improve or rather uh, uh, focus, give a lot of focus on healthcare system of the country so that all of us are healthy, then we can call it a healthy nation. So yes, we have a lot of emphasis on health, but health may not be the only agenda that we have. Yeah. All right. So a healthy nation, a happy nation. Perfect. Yeah. So we should understand, uh, no matter which party or which uh, candidate comes from which background, all that matters to you is the development and the advancement of the nation. Sir? Perfect. Democracy and the country. We DNT strongly believe that uh, when the elections are on, when the active campaign period is on. People must look at our manifesto from a very critical, different lens, not through the same old lens. Mm -hmm. The conventional developmental activities like roads and bridges and schools and all these things are there in our planned activities. Whether we put it as a pledge or not, this is going to happen. Mm -hmm. Because we have a good set of bureaucracy mm -hmm. who will run this uh, country. Mm -hmm. And they, will, they are the ones who came up with the plans and they will implement it. I personally feel that every five years when new parties or the political parties come up and campaign, mm -hmm. people must look for newer ideas mm -hmm. because we have to progress. You know, we can't be at the same level every time and talk about bridges and roads and everything. Mm -hmm. So this time what you're offering is, you know we are a GNS country. Mm -hmm. We want happiness more than anything. Mm -hmm. That's why the concept of GNS because money alone will not make one happy. We want overall uh, happiness of the uh, Bhutanese people. That's why our manifesto is targeting the software component of it, not the hardware component of it. Roads and bridges and everything will happen. These are important. But more important than that, uh, that is the software part. We would like to take care of the health so that if we are healthy, we are happy, we are rich. 
your campaign also talked about the change for voting yes and uh, like we know our uh, recent prime minister uh, had also been focusing mostly globally in fact he has been speaking globally about the conservation of uh, environment and uh, the cultural heritage mm -hmm. so sh what should we understand change for vote is it only for the parties or also the the manifestos that uh, the party entirely had regarding the environment of the nation sir well i mean i don't think any of the party manifestos are different uh, stand on the environment of our country i mean that is standard we have to respect it we'll go by it i don't think any of the four parties uh, offered a substantial change in our approach to environment conservation but well, that is one of the pillars of gross national happiness we know the importance of it and we have to abide by it i don't think when when i say change we're not going to change the whole thing we are not going to change the schooling system we are not going to change environment policies no that is something different what we want is when i say change you must change your democratic mindset you must not think that the previous governments are always better than the newer ones mm -hmm. you know because uh, not giving a chance doesn't mean we are not capable mm -hmm. they must test the new parties test the strengths and capabilities of the new parties and see judge then who is better rather than giving us the opportunity giving the opportunity to the same old parties doesn't mean the newer parties are not capable so that is what the change that we are offering for no 60% of the country should be under forest cover is there clearly in our constitution and that is our bible we have to go by that you know because that is the vision of his majesty the king mm -hmm. and under any circumstances we uh, we will respect what our king wants this country to go through so at least 60 now we have 72% but uh, minimum 60% we have to have uh, a forest coverage sure, yeah. because uh, that is economically uh, we can uh, benefit a bit now if you do not respect that but this country doesn't belong to this generation it belongs to future generations mm -hmm. let our upcoming youth also uh, uh, enjoy what we have now exactly. so economically if you do better now doesn't mean that uh, that our future uh, generations will be benefiting in the same way mm -hmm. so we must save some of our uh, environment and good things that we have for our future generation uh, sir uh, coming to the indian part jaigaon and funchaling being also called commonly as the twin towns of the nations uh, and jaigaon also being the gateway for the bhutanese tourism the tourism industry entire of the industry uh, are there any plans are there any thing in pipeline for uh, places like funchaling and jaigaon to pamper to advance the tourism of the nation sir oh yes i mean uh, tourism is uh, the second revenue earner in a country so uh, every party and dnt also have uh, uh, plans to um, improve our tourism sector mm -hmm. and if our manifesto clearly mentions that as soon as if you are given a mandate we would like to come up with a, come up with a very inclusive tourism policy of the country mm -hmm. so that we can encourage more um, local as well as foreign tourists to come in and then uh, right now you are talking about uh, jaigong funsling relation we would like to see at least 10 15 jaigong funslings uh, all through the southern gate you know that the borders that we have in india mm -hmm. we only have one right now mm -hmm. why not about 5 1 or 10 jaigongs and funslings uh, uh, between uh, uh, southern bhutan and india yeah we are very open for that there have been several uh, smaller glitches i would say not problems exactly but then uh, glitches in the tourism industry uh, faced by the uh, travel traders in mm -hmm. jaigaon and funchaling regarding the immigration and the uh, accommodation here in bhutan mm -hmm. so should the traders of jaigaon have some hope uh, when the government of bhutan is changing now sir well i'm sure i mean when we offer change it should change it should change as long as our laws are comfortable and friendly mm -hmm. rest of the things are day to day implementation i don't think there's a problem at all because our tourism policy and the laws are very clear that we encourage more tourists to come in mm -hmm. so the glitches that you are saying might be uh, in the implementation part so and there might be subjective there might be individual mm -hmm. individual interest mm -hmm. and immigration officers who are working there might be having different views mm -hmm. so as long as the laws are friendly i don't think uh, those local issues is an issue at all sure. sure now i don't know whether other countries should be worried about elections in bhutan or not but uh, i personally feel that uh, whatever happens in thimphu should be a bhutanese problem 
Any change in government in Thimphu should not matter with our neighbours because when it comes to foreign policy, I personally and DNT stand is foreign policy should not change every five years with change of government. Mm -hmm. So Delhi should not worry about change in government in Thimphu. Mm -hmm. Likewise, Thimphu should not worry about change in government in Delhi. Mm -hmm. That is called a true friendship. Mm -hmm. Now, if Bhutan needs to worry with every change in government in Delhi, mm -hmm. or if Delhi needs to worry about every change in government in Thimphu, mm -hmm. that means we do not have a good relation. Exactly. You know, our relation should be based on trust. Mm -hmm. And for Bhutan and for DNT, uh, we are absolutely clear on this that uh, DNT stand on endo Bhutan relation will not change based on what we feel. Mm -hmm. We will only be guided by our His Majesty's vision how he has brought this country up until now, mm -hmm. we would like him to guide us and take this country forward. Mm -hmm. So on endo bhutan relation and foreign policy, uh, DNT will not stand, take uh, any different stand mm -hmm. than our past governments. So this was an exclusive conversation with our strongest contender of the Prime Minister of Bhutan, Dr. Chiring, and we got to know from him that his manifestos, as promised in the time of the campaign is not just uh, his commitments but uh, are the backbone of the party and for the nation and uh, we heard that he said he also said a healthy nation can only be a happy nation no matter which party wins or lo loses indo bhutan relationship shall still remain as it is and it has its own place above all talking about youth he also focused on the literacy of the youth shall not only be the literacy thing but the skill, the skill of the youth is what is important to the nation now. Also with the change of the government, also with the change of the government, Bhutan shall still remain the carbon negative country and the cross national happiness program shall still be the backbone under the guidelines of His Majesty the King. We all wish him the best of luck for the elections and a bright future of the nation. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much for your valuable time. Thank you. So by the end of the day, the happiest people of the happiest country has decided the fate of the nation for the coming five years. And the day of the third parliamentary elections has come to an end. We were fortunate enough to meet the DNT president, Dr. Lote, and we, could, we had an exclusive meeting with him, interview with him. We wish both the parties all the best and may the happiest people of the happiest country have the best and the most deserving Prime Minister for the years to come. Thank you so much for being with us. Stay updated, stay connected with Connecting Nations.